The year 1990 in Ireland was marked by significant events. The country experienced political and social changes, including the election of Mary Robinson as the first female president of Ireland. The economy faced challenges, with high unemployment rates and a recession. The Northern Ireland peace process began, aiming to resolve the conflict between nationalists and unionists. The year also saw the release of the Birmingham Six, who had been wrongfully convicted of a bombing. Additionally, cultural achievements were celebrated, such as the success of Irish films and the hosting of the Eurovision Song Contest in Dublin. Overall, 1990 was a year of both progress and difficulties for Ireland. Good evening. Does it matter that presidential candidates tell the truth? If it does, then Fianna Foyle has a problem. Either Brian Lenehan wasn't telling the truth last May, or he's not telling the truth now. After denying all week that he phoned the president to try to stop him dissolving the Dáil in 1982, Brian Lenehan is now haunted by the publication today of a taped interview in which he says he did phone the president, and so did Charles Hawkins. Uh, did I get a phone call through the president's version? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, I got through to him from the top there. And uh, he wanted to do, he wanted to do it for us. You're unbelievable. Well, I want to say that I'm absolutely certain on mature recollection at this stage that I did not ring President Hillary. And I want to put my reputation on the line in that respect. You're so unbelievable! You're unbelievable! I never thought I'd see the day in Ireland that one's loyalty would be questioned has been a dangerous attribute for one aspiring to public office in this country. I'm proud of my loyalty. I think it's the main qualification I have for the present office which I am now seeking with your support. Because my, my loyalty will be total and absolute to all the people of Ireland. She wears diamonds, she wears rubies, she wears stones as big as my ones that come from the Coliseum. And she says, do you want to see them? And I said, hello, 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 set me a cover. Hello, 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 set me a cover. I was elected by men and women of all parties and none, by many with great moral courage, who stepped out from the faded flags of the Civil War and voted for a new Ireland, and above all, by the women of Ireland, Manon Aheron. The women of Ireland, Manon Aheron, who instead of rocking the cradle, rocked the system. Hello, 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 the second coming. Hello, 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 the second coming. Says I feel much better, and you see much better. Could you get it much better? Worked it all out meticulously. So um, maybe it will help your reports if I tell you I'm going to um, visit all the countries in the world, eat all the food in the world, drink all the drink in the world, make love, I hope, to all the women in the world, and 
Maybe I'll get a good night's sleep. <laughs> that the, the embrace of my homecoming overwhelms me. Take this from me to each of you, my love. Thank you. There's no doubt, the Anglo-Irish agreement was the main issue and what the people on the doorstep were telling me is that we must not give in, we must maintain our opposition. Certainly questions will be asked, and that will be the point, perhaps, that um, the full facts of this sensational win will be disclosed. Irish, English journalists. Not just me, I'm just the one that has decided that um, I'm not going to be bullied any longer. I am, am entitled as an individual to speak to who I want to speak to. I think that's pretty straightforward. And I don't want to talk to him. is entrusted with the responsibility of taking the penalty that could send Ireland into the quarter-finals of the World Cup. This kick can decide it all. The nation holds its breath. Yes!
also greet the members of the Irish football team. His best wishes. We prepared properly, we had a little bit of sun, we ate well, and we drank very little. We're going to change that tonight. It's been seven hours and fifteen days since you took your love. German president today urged all Germans to share both the burdens and the benefits of a united Germany. I'm not on for a few seconds. Listen, Breffney phoned. Hmm, the dead arose. Well, he said he was up to his oxters with this new move to slacks and casuals. And listen, Dervla, get this. There's a new girl in the office, name of Maraid, that he tells me he has to break in. <laughs> I suppose he thinks I'm jealous. Laughable, really. And no, <laughs> Maraid. <laughs> Leave. And the next program is get off the bloody phone and do your bloody job. Well, sounds different. I would like 
that we would first of all be successful at European level, do a good job on the present. So when they hand over to the Italians next July, everybody will be able to say truthfully, well, Ireland did a good job, Ireland did a good job. of them have no more intention of giving up their national identity or surrendering, surrendering their national sovereignty on these matters than we have. After all, in the ultimate, war or peace is a sovereign decision. So I think that the trouble is that there's quite a lot of rhetoric and far too little nitty-gritty. Last year we spent 10 billion, 213 million, 64,564 pounds on imported goods. The funny thing is, we'd all have more money to spend if we pushed for guaranteed Irish. are looked on uh, as market leaders by everybody else in this business and uh, what's good enough for Intel uh, can certainly be good enough for everybody else. Breaks down into the arms of Danny Colliby once again, his second possession in the match, into Shea Fahey. Going for a score himself, and he's put it over the bar. Share and subscribe.